Wide 72. Wide 72. Hut. All right, coaches, this is Coach Colter. I'm coming to you from 92 Mesh Group Channel. You're home on YouTube for the Air Raid offense. And I've got a special guest with us here tonight, Coach Joe Salas, my guy. Uh, just had a really, really good year at Hopton uh, in year two, right, Coach? Yep. Same yeah, year here. two. Year two at Hopton of getting that program turned around. I know you, some of you guys who uh, watch the channel um, heard me talking about Coach Salas uh, the other day in the article that was uh, put on the internet by High School OT talking about uh, you know him changing that program around and, and and really really good good job he's done there. They made it to the second round of the playoffs and and you know from what I understand if if his quarterback would have stayed healthy they they had a chance to maybe shock the world a little bit or at least make it interesting you know but when you play the the high school that Todd Gurley went to there's a there's a reason why that guy was as good as he is there they're just a dominant traditional program but hey if you like these kind of videos and you'd like to learn more about the air raid offense you know we'd love if you'd like and subscribe to the channel uh just click that bell so you know when we go live really excited you know for coach Salas because if you guys don't know coach Salas is the guy that got me started into YouTube his channel has some phenomenal videos on it so go over and check him out at uh at, at coach Joe Salas um in the, uh, and I'll put a link to his uh, channel in the description. Go ahead and check that out down there. But, but Coach, you know, look, like I said, you know, Hopton um, was a big-time program at one point in North Carolina. You know, they, they were winning. You never wanted to play Hopton. You know, Coach Al Britt, I think y'all named something after him or something not too long ago down there. Yeah, yeah the stadium. Yeah, Coach, Coach Britt is a, is a legend in North Carolina uh, and a traditional, like, Straight T, wing T type type guys, hard nose. Wing T guru. Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, but you know, you didn't want to play Hopton in the eighties and nineties. They were very, very good. And then, and then you know, the economy turned, and I think the community may have turned a little bit, and the program you know didn't see good days for a while. Um, you, on the other hand, have have been to a bunch of different places and been successful pretty much everywhere you went, and. And so, so talk a little bit about why Hopton and, and what you were able to do because you've made the playoffs both years. Um, they went from winning, I don't know, maybe three or four games in, in, a, in several years to 12 games, 12, 13 games in your two years. Um, so, you know, just talk to us a little bit about that process and, and, and what role the air raid maybe played into that. Well, the uh, Hopton, like you said, was a traditional power. Uh, I actually played Hopton when I was at other places. And when you saw Hopton on the schedule, buddy, you knew you better buckle it up. It was going to be a slobber knocker. And then it wasn't so much the economy. It's just the uh, the demographics in that area of North Carolina have changed. And uh, we, you've got a huge Hispanic population that's moved in. And, and uh, that shifted the demographics at the school. And, uh, and they, you know, they went through some lean years, probably 10 years of, uh, you know, went from the top to the bottom. Uh, they, they only won one game in the two years before I got there. They were 0-11 when, when, uh, the year before I got there and, and 1-10 and the year before that. So, uh, you know, they were as, as bad as you could be. And, uh, you know, when I went in there, I had this crazy idea, and you you know me well enough. You know I'm, I'm crazy anyway. Is <laughs> I wanted to test this idea that culture was more important than talent, and we went in and we doubled down on culture immediately. And uh, you know, culture. And, you know, we all love to talk about culture basically the same way that coaches love to talk about special teams. You know, right? You won't find a a, a coach that won't tell you, "Hey, it's a third of the game. It's super important." <laughs> Coach so, Mummy says it's only 17%, by the way. <laughs> you, got a few, you got a few that'll go ahead and say that. It's not that <laughs> Most of us will say, oh, it's a third of the game. It's yeah, vital. Right. But the problem with special teams is no one knows that we all know it's important, but no one knows how to practice it. You know, we don't have any good drills to hey, run. I'm going to cut you off on that one one second. You guys need to go to Coach Salas' channel, and I will try to put a link in the video. He has a video called The World's Greatest Special Teams Drill, and I can tell you that when we work together, I stole that drill, and it is it is phenomenal. So when you talk about not knowing how to practice special teams, go over to his channel, check out that video, and watch that drill because it really, really makes a difference. And that's because I, I stole it from a Hall of Famer down in Georgia. So, uh, oh, there but you go. The point being, we're all, you know, we all know how important special teams are, but we don't know how to practice them. 
And the same is true with culture. We all, you know, we all pretty much got on the culture bus immediately and said, oh, yeah, that, that's important. Uh, you got to you got to do a good job of culture. No one knows. You know, my problem wasn't the, uh, you know, is culture important? My cult, my my problem was how do you do culture? Right. What, what are the drills? What do you do? And we came up with this four cornerstones of culture, which are uh, mission, core principles, relationships, and process. Right. Those are those are the the infrastructure of building a culture. And then uh, you know, and then you got to deep dive into each one of those. So mission wise, you know, our our mission is to teach boys how to be men and build winners for life. You know. You and I both, uh, you know, I, I grew up in a single parent home and, you know, and everything I learned about being a man, I learned from football and football coaches. And I, and I was lucky growing up, you know, all my coaches were awesome, but they all randomly taught us important lessons. Right. And, and when you when you structure the culture the way we've done it now, it, it systemizes how you're going to teach kids how to be men and how you're going to teach kids how to win. Yeah, and, and if you guys perfect. follow Coach Salas on Twitter, um, at Coach Joe Salas on Twitter, you'll see every day there <laughs> is a culture post on his Twitter. And, you know, it'll be a Friday for family, and then there'll be a picture or something. And, and you know, we say that, you know, jokingly, but, I mean, really, it's it's not something that he does just to say he's doing it, you know? I mean, they're, they're, it's purpose-driven. Um, I've, I've been up there and seen him talking to his kids before the game. I've seen him talk to him at practice. Um, you know, we went up there and, and, and to one of his big rival games and went into the locker room before the game and went in there at halftime. And, you know, even when things weren't going well at, at halftime, you know, they were still talking about the lessons that can be learned and growing. And, and then they came out and they played crazy in the second half and, and dang near pulled that game off. Um, if it hadn't had a couple kids go down injured and, you know, anybody who's ever coached at a small school knows that when you lose one, you really lose three. Um, you know, but that that right there just says to you that that culture really does mean something. It's not a you know, it's not a T-shirt. You know, so many of us get a T-shirt made on. By the way, we're going to start selling 92 Mesh Group T-shirts again. <laughs> I had a, I had a coach in Florida coach. We, we just we just put some hoodies out and he said, coach, hoodies are kind of a hard sell down here. <laughs> I said, well, you might be right. But um you know, so many of us have these T-shirts made, you know, they say unfinished business or or get this done, get that done. And then it just ends up being a T-shirt. And uh, and I, I think that's great. And and, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm really excited about for for Coach Salas is that, you know, this is not something that he just, you know, he's not a snake oil salesman. He, you know, when he worked with me at Red Springs, he talked about this every place he's been. He talks about this. I'm pretty sure that if we went in his bag, there will be some kind of leadership book around him. He, he's constantly studying leadership and, and things like that. And um, I'm still working on uh, me and me and Damon West actually co coach have been talking quite a bit. You know, he's so busy now. I don't know if you ever read, have you read coffee bean yet? Uh, I have not. You need to read coffee bean. It's 70 pages. You can get it done in 20 minutes. It's, it's phenomenal. Uh, Damon West was a college quarterback and um, he wrote that book with uh, John Gordon. He spent, he got sentenced to life in prison and uh, worked his way out and, and, and did some different things. And now he goes and speaks. He's spoken to every major college in the country. Saban's had him in, him and uh, Dabo Sweeney. He goes, he, now he's working with prisoners and doing some things. But but Coffee Bean is awesome. So if you haven't had a chance to I check it out. That's the only John Gordon book I haven't read yet. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. But uh, Damon's going to come on the channel at some point. Um, you know, the problem is, is when he's free, I'm kind of teaching other people's children. So it kind of, you know, it kind of gets in the way a little bit. So we'll work that out here pretty cool. But, you know, when you talk about culture, those are the things. And that was one of the things I learned from you. Not only did I learn, you know, air raid stuff, obviously, but how important those kind of books were, you know, read those kind of things, learn from those kind of things. You can always do that. And, you know, just as much time as we all want, just as much time. You gotta be. You gotta be reading. You gotta be growing. If yeah. Well, you know, I saw something the other day that that said um, major major CEOs in business read fifty two books a year mm -hmm. you know, on, on leadership and things like that. So I think that's really really important. All right. So look, um, I, I know you and I could talk about this for a long long time, but the reason why I wanted to have you on is because the other great thing is is that you are going to uh, to come speak at a raid intensive in December. Um, and, okay. the, you know, I had somebody tell me today, you know, that's that's such an early time for a clinic. And it really is. But I've had so many guys who wanted to sit down and talk 
um, that I said, hey, let's put something together. And, and one of the major talks that Coach Salas is going to talk about is turning a program around and and using the air raid offense and 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 talk to me a little bit about how the air raid has done that coach what what is it what is it giving you as far as you know kids is, has it increased participation or fans happier you know how does that work out well and i, I think all air raid guys know this you, you you get some skilled kids out that you wouldn't normally get out and just by systemizing your offense you give your you give yourself a chance to score some points and even when you're losing, you're still scoring points, and that and that gets excitement going. Yeah, and, uh, it makes a difference in the you know just the the positive environment that you're trying to build. Right. But uh, you know, pretty pretty quick you can get you know. I always said you know no one realizes that we're in a contest to lead the conference in passing. <laughs> no one no one else cares about that but an air raid coach. Yeah, but no doubt. I always thought when you come into a program and they're bad at everything. You got to pick one thing that you can be the best in, mm-hmm. and when you when you bring in an air raid offense in, you know pretty much, and you, you know you can be the best team in the conference and throwing the football, and that gives you something to start building on. If we can be the best at throwing the football, then we can start being the best in special teams, and then we can start being the best in the weight room. And mm-hmm. you know, we came into Hopton, we said we're going to be we're going to win games when we get stronger, when we get tougher. And when we uh, and when we get uh, and when we start practicing better, and those are the three things that we focused on right out the gate. And an air raid system allows you to be a great practice team pretty day. Absolutely, day. absolutely. And those are just the building blocks. You know, it's, it's yeah. part of that. You know, the four cornerstones that process one. Well, I don't know about you. I heard Nick Saban talking about that for a long time, mm-hmm. and I would search. I would Google. You know, what is the process? What is that? What is well, finally, it, you know, the process is the day-to-day of getting better and better. Right. You know, there's a whole lot of areas in football that you got to get good at, but it's it's all a process. You know, you don't you don't walk in the weight room the first day and all of a sudden have 300 pound bench pressers. There's a process. You got to be consistent and go in there every day, day after day after day, and and virtually every part of football is about just day by day getting better and better. And and process is just that. It's the day to day of getting better and better. Right. Absolutely. I, I'm excited to have you down. Uh, you know, people don't understand, man. Coach Salas will, will talk football anytime, anywhere. He loves I'm, it. I'm a clinic guy, man. I love clinics. I yeah, love he loves it. And, and so when I when I floated when I floated the idea to him, I think I, I hit send on the text, and then like a millisecond later, I got the thumbs up. <laughs> so I was like, so I'm all um, down to the clinic. When I when I thought about the things that 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 we wanted to cover at the clinic, the one thing that I saw, I said, you know, I want I want Joe to come down and, and really talk to people about, um, you know, about how this culture thing works and how they're able to turn some things around. And what people don't understand is the team that you got coming back next year has a chance to be really really good too, because it's not just a team; it's a program. Um, the culture is there. They're really really young, and uh, I watched you play a couple times, and I, and I know the thing that I liked about them was even when even when they were down, they weren't out. Their heads didn't start dragging. You know, they kept fighting. You know, fighting to the end, and really excited about that. So I'm really excited to have you uh, on December the seventh uh, down in Fayetteville. Like I said, if you're in the Raleigh, um, I'm sorry, not Raleigh. If you're in the North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia area, um, Georgia, if you want to come up for the day. Uh, you can, if you want to stay the night, the hotel, if you just tell them you're coming to the ARI clinic, they'll give you a discount on your room. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're going to go from nine to four or five. And if you want to go to the bar or Hooters across the street and talk ball after that, I'm sure we'll do that too. Um, it's just a really good day of air raid fellowship. And, um, and I don't know, man, Coach Salas, maybe we need to do a podcast or something. I kind of like, I kind of like this deal. Just kind of sitting here chit chatting about football. Maybe we can, you know, do something and work that out and we'll do it on your channel one week and my channel another week or something like that. Who knows? Let me, let me tell you this, this story. This is, this is why air raid over. I, I, I think to, to build a program, you got to pick a system and I don't really care. You know, obviously we're biased. We love the air raid, but I don't care what system it is. Just don't be a hodgepodge guy. Right. You, know, you, gotta, you gotta pick one and get good at it. But this is why the air raid is the difference maker. We're playing our, our second biggest uh, rival, uh, last game of the regular season, and we're in a slobber knocker and it's back and forth and it's cold out there. 
and they get the ball. We have a one-point lead, and they get the ball, and they start driving it. And, uh, you know, you, you saw us play. We, were, we had a younger defense and a more mature offense. So we were an offensive team this year. And they started driving the ball, and they drove it down to about our 12-yard line with a minute and 12 seconds to go into game. And we're, and we're up by one. So, so what do you do? We called a timeout, and we told them to let them score. Yeah. Then we took the ball, drove it down, and won the football game with 12 seconds on the clock. There's no way, there's no other offense that we could have done that with. You know, right. we're a great wing T team, we're a great wishbone team, we would have been in trouble. But because we had the ability to, you know, we used we used all of our timeouts on defense and then had to let them score there right at the end mm-hmm. and, and had the confidence that we could drive the field in a minute 12 and win the football game. That's exactly what we did. So that's what Air Raid brings with you. It brings you the ability to be explosive and make plays and have a high and you know, carry a high level of confidence into pressure situations, you know, and yeah. fourth, we went through it. I, I'm just doing cut-ups today. We, we went for it on fourth downs uh, 42 times this year. You know, we had that deal where if it was fourth and five or less, we were going for it. And that, that I, I really believe that makes your kids immune to the pressure of fourth downs. You A little know, bit. You, you know, we're going to go for it every time, and we don't care where that is. I'm, exci- I'm excited to see your uh, your video this spring that you're going to do because I'm sure you're going to do part two. Uh, another video on his channel he got he does guys is uh, data making data driven decisions. You know, so Coach Salas will he'll look at his his data like he just said and he'll say, okay, did this work? Did that work? Um, and and so that's really really exciting on that deal. So hey, listen guys, if you kind of like this video, uh, we'd love to do this more often. I don't know, maybe we can bring. Uh, We'll get we'll get Shane and those guys in and, and, and maybe we can do like a little podcast maybe once a month or something or or whatever and just kind of have a little chit chat. But it's really excited. I just wanted to get you on. I'm really I'm really excited about getting you down to ARI. Uh, Co- forward, Coach Knapp is coming down from West Virginia. And 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 to be honest, I hope Coach Dular don't make it. <laughs> we were here, He messaged me today. He said he said, man, he said, when we win Friday, we're going to the state championship game. Yeah. So, so we, we that we I don't know what's going to happen with that deal, but I I, I wish him the best and, and everybody and um, and as always, spin it to win. Light seventy two. Light seventy two.